Throughout history, humans have pondered the mysteries of the afterlife. One word emerges repeatedly, heaven, a place of beauty, peace and eternal rest, etched into the human imagination across cultures, beliefs and time periods. It represents hope in the face of death, a sanctuary free from suffering and the ultimate destination for the soul. In today's world, perspectives on heaven vary greatly. For some, it's a literal, physical place. For others, it's a metaphor, a state of consciousness, or spiritual peace. Some dismiss it altogether, seeing it as a relic of ancient belief. I don't believe in heaven, or I thought the afterlife. I do believe in heaven, and I would say it would be like a bright light at the end of the t- tunnel, but there is no right or wrong answer to that. Something magical, if you will. I don't know, I just think of people singing and people having fun. You know the Windows XP background? Yeah. I think of that, but with a lot of people singing. Without much references, I would say yes, I 100% believe in heaven. My first thoughts, like, you know, that like, in the movies and that, like the white stuff, and, like the cows and that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I believe in heaven because I'm a Christian. Yes. The word comes to mind is actually a really great question. Yeah, that is true. It is a tricky. It's a dissertation question. I believe in heaven, and I know you know I'm Muslim. And after reading, I will uh, go to my God, and then it will be uh, deepen what I did before in the art. I do believe in heaven, but I just think that heaven is is right here. I think it's just a matter of us being present and aware with which is the beauty that surrounds us all the time. Yeah, I believe in heavens because we're just alive to live and go to heaven to go and rest. I feel like the typical question, like the typical answer would just be like clouds and like blue skies and like golden say, like, gates kind of, and like... like a little yeah. Bit ethereal, yeah, exactly. Kind of I feel like that would be the first yeah. thought that came to mind. Yeah, no, same. Like yeah. kind of like looks like some sort of like magical fairy land. Yeah. The thing is very beautiful and a lot of clouds. No, I don't actually believe in heaven, but I can see lots of imagery related to it through art and um, literature, but it's not something I believe in. Basically, it's like where we go after death. So it's like, it's for the righteous people. If you live like a righteous life. Of course I believe in heaven. What comes into mind is flowing rivers of wine, eternal life. I don't believe in heaven necessarily. I think um, the like heaven that I imagine is one where it's like in the clouds and you're there with your family and you're kind of like living happily ever after almost. No, I think when you die, that's the end. Um, You just return to the earth. Nothing, you just die. I, mean, I believe there's some sort of spiritual energy out there, but, yeah, you know, an organized religion. You know. I do, yeah. Like, I'm a Christian, so, like, it's one of the things I believe in. Like, it's kind of essential to your faith, right? Like, you know. I do believe in afterlife, to be fair. What it looks like, I feel like it's hard to say, because yeah. I do believe people just, like, you just have many lives on and you can't really know what your previous or future life is well I kind of believe in reincarnation okay so yeah I think that our soul just travels into another body I believe in something after death not necessarily heaven but when I think about it just peace quiet well I do believe uh, in karma and reincarnation Mm -hmm. so um, my actual belief is like one you finish your life as a human being in this physical form, you have a chance to live another one and do a little bit of better version of yourself. And that's when karma comes in place. If you didn't learn and pay your debts or uh, redeem yourself on any topic, you have another chance. I don't believe in the afterlife. Uh, there was a time two years ago that I started to believe that there was a higher power. And then I realized that it was myself uh, feeling motivated and feeling that I could do much more to be in a better place. Well, I was raised Christian Orthodox and I still very much feel connected to to my roots in that sense. But nowadays, the way in which I relate to spirituality and my connection to God 
is not necessarily in thinking much about the afterlife. My focus is more around the present moment. How can I show up to my life, to the people around me, as present, as lovingly as possible? You know, I don't know what's going to happen after I die. I, I don't know. I don't know, really. Um, I, th- I believe in like a, a high power and like I'm a Christian, but... I don't really go to church that vociferously. I go like every now and again. I feel like sometimes that you can kind of feel like if someone that you loved has passed, Mm -hmm. that they might be like, you know, like a guidance for you. But then whether that actually appears in everyday life is like pretty tricky to say. When we ask people what they think about heaven, the answers vary widely. For some, it's a literal place in the clouds, a paradise where good people go after death. For others, it's more abstract, a state of inner peace or perhaps a spiritual reunion with loved ones who have passed on. Yet for many, heaven remains shrouded in mystery, a distant and vague concept, more myth than reality. Some question if it even exists, while others hold on to fragments of hope passed down through tradition, unsure of what heaven truly means. Each perspective though different, reflects a deep desire to understand the unknown and to find meaning in life beyond death. I feel very jealous uh, of the people that they do believe in an afterlife because that's such a... that's an amazing way of living. You don't, you don't feel worried about dying. You don't feel... Uh, worried about um, what is going to happen once you live your average 80 80 years of your life. Heaven, I think it's a very uh, war-stated in the culture of the religious Catholicism, Christianism. In Islam, uh, our prophet said all of Muslims will go to the heaven one day but not other people. I don't believe necessarily in like rules or requirements and if you fit the bill, you get to heaven. I don't believe that. The requirement to enter is literally believe in Jesus and accept him in your life and truly repent. And, you know, he's done the hard work. Like, he is your requirement in. Of course, there are requirements to enter. I mean, there are rules set set up by God. Good ones go to heaven, bad ones go to hell. And it's very tough to go to the heaven nowadays because we do lots of the sin uh, but we don't know what is the sin and what is the good. Yeah, I think I don't believe everyone will go to heaven. Everyone has a right to, but I think that if you've been <laughs> god awful, I guess you wouldn't. But I believe that eventually, after the bad ones have their thoughts of their time in hell, they, they get to heaven later on. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah God shouldn't be so merciless, isn't it? So, why is there so much confusion about heaven? Much of it stems from cultural portrayals, films, books, and even casual conversations. Heaven becomes whatever we imagine it to be, shaped by our desires, hopes, or even our fears. And yet, the Bible reveals something different, a truth that may challenge what we think we know. The thing is what people need to understand is that God never created us to be confused. We became confused because humanity through Adam and Eve made a decision not to walk with God. So there's three prominent places in existence at the moment. There's eternity with God, which is currently heaven. There's the earth, which we find ourselves seven billion souls living a physical life and there's hell and because Adam and Eve chose to not walk with this righteous and holy God they chose the road to hell that's why the Bible says broad is the way to destruction broad is the way to hell and narrow is the way that leads to righteousness or leads to heaven and so many people unfortunately are blinded and confused about heaven and about God and about Jesus and all that confusion Satan is using the enemy to get people to go where he will spend eternity because he lost heaven as Adam and Eve lost because that is what Eden is Eden, the name Eden means a spot of the presence of God 
is actually a spot of heaven on earth. And Adam and Eve lost that because Satan caused man to believe his lies above God's word. So God wants to remove that confusion. And he wants to remove it from everyone that listens to me today. Heaven sounds to a fallen person like paradise. Actually, it's called paradise. But if you are a slave in prison, heaven sounds like paradise. It sounds like an amazing place. You just want to go there. So a lot of people want just to get into heaven. They just want to exchange the decay, the hell that they have on earth for something better. Um, unfortunately, that's not how it works. It's not how God designed it. We need to understand how we got ourselves here on the road to destruction. And then we need to listen to God's instructions how to get ourselves back to the road of eternal happiness, eternal perfection, holiness, righteousness, and everything that's good in the realm of God's existence. I believe a lot of human humanity do not understand the heaven because we try to figure out heaven from a human point of view. It's, it's a dimension of dwelling that we exist in. Heaven is far above that. Even though God has created mankind and the earth to ultimately extend everything that's in heaven, everything that's in the dimension of heaven where he exists to be on earth as well. Now, when God created Adam and Eve, he wanted to create heaven on earth. But it's very important that we understand that God wanted to create beings just like him. And that means God wanted to create uh, 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 creatures man uh, or mankind that has a free will you know God can do anything God can create how many heavens he wants but he wanted to create a place with creatures that will want to be want to become heaven want to have heaven on earth where they can express their free will where God had to give man the opportunity to choose heaven or earth what will you what do you want do you want to have heaven on earth or do you want to have your own thing and unfortunately adam and eve made the wrong choice they followed the voice of the serpent that was kicked out of heaven and 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 they believed satan more than they believed god's word and that in itself prolonged the work of god on earth i mean just imagine if adam and eve just kept on working with god listening to god obeyed god's word I think we would have all been birthed into uh, an earth that is consumed by heaven. But unfortunately, we know where we are today, that um, they, they missed the mark. And instead of bringing heaven to earth, they um, got disconnected from heaven. And, and, and since the day that they missed the mark, God is working on the plan to ultimately bring heaven to earth. And that's what the Bible says in the revelations that God will bring a new heaven and a new earth and it will be one dwelling place for God and all the people that chose to be with him and chose to come to him the way he determined for mankind to to receive the fullness of heaven in their lives while they live on earth and you see that's why what what that's the thing about Jesus Jesus is not just you know getting you out of hell uh, you know, choosing Jesus is, is stepping through a door that uh, God will bring through you. You give God again the ability uh, and the chance to bring heaven to earth. And through your life as a vessel, God, God can express many aspects of heaven in your world today. You know, when people touch you as a born again Christian uh, that has God living in you, and God dwelling in your spirit, uh, you can you can you can express heaven to people um, in, in in a magnificent and beautiful way.
I'm too afraid to think about that. <laughs> yeah. How have you ever considered what happened to your soul? Yeah. Oh my god, I've never thought about that. No, neither have I. I've never thought that far into death, to be honest. No, me neither. I believe in sort of to a degree an element of spirituality. Maybe um renewal, maybe some sort of rebirth. I feel like it's all secular. I don't know whether it's I'm gonna be a human again or not. And I, what I mean to say is, I think everything in life is connected. And and if I if after I die I become a tree, I'm I'm equally grateful to be a tree. If there is a soul and there is heaven and hell, I think being a good person is is probably paramount to having a good afterlife. But I don't necessarily think that that is the case. My soul is gonna be great. Because I live my words in a beautiful in my in a beautiful ways. When you think about heaven and hell, it's better to be a good person in case it does exist, in which case you've kind of got eternity to enjoy the the rewards of that. Whereas if you, you know, live badly and don't believe in heaven and hell and then you go to hell, you've got eternity to kind of deal with your mistakes. The Bible describes heaven not just as a place, but as the very dwelling place of God. A place of complete righteousness, peace and joy in his presence. Scripture tells us that heaven is more than a distant dream. It's a reality where God's perfect will and personhood is fully realized. I think the biblical concept of heaven is found in God's word. God makes it clear um, that heaven exists um, because God exists. And if you study the word, you find that the word speaks about three levels of heaven. Um, the the air that the birds are flying in, then above that will be where the stars and the moon, um, which is the heavenlies, and then it talks about heaven itself. And heaven itself is is the dwelling place of a righteous and holy God. So the Bible says His throne is um, enthroned in righteousness, and He everything in heaven is perfect and pure and uh, it's the invincible dwelling place of a righteous and holy God and and that's far above the existence of man on earth or birds flying in the air or stars and moons moving in the heavenlies Um, and you can find that in the word if you study the word The, the bible speaks about heaven and declares to us, you know, and gives us pictures of of, of heaven. You know, um, one and one scripture the Bible talks about um, the, the the roads in heaven is paved with gold. There's no sickness, no disease. Uh, so it's a it's a pure, it's a perfect, it's a holy, it's a righteous place where the invisible God dwells. He's not only dwelling there, but it is where He takes His abode. Um, primarily and that is what he wants to bring down to earth and he wants to consume earth with that atmosphere with that holiness with that righteousness um, and bring the invisible to the visible I'm not too sure. I don't, I, didn't, I don't know if there really is a purpose. The age-old saying is, uh, is immortality, is the uh, spreading of generations and the, the furtherment of uh, the species. I think that life humans in general, we are just a very beautiful coincidence that uh, because of different uh, things happened a uh, thousand of years ago, We suddenly arrived here to Earth and we are just trying to survive and have the best life uh, here. For me, at least, I would say that the purpose of life is, you know, to to glorify God with how you live your life. You know, it's about how, you know, in everything that you do, like, do you give your heart, do you give your mind, do you give your soul and reverence to like the right, the right person? Uh, That's a tough question. Uh, I think that we should should just... uh live our life as good as we can and I also believe in karma so I think that uh, how we behave in this life is uh, kind of it can 
affect what we will be in the other life. I would just talk about in relation to purpose in life and living a good life and being a good person and uh, leaving the world in a better place rather than a worse place. There is no more purpose to it. We're an accident of chemistry. It's a test. I mean, life on Earth is very short, 60, 70, 80 years. So it's a test of how you, how you relate to humanity, whether you're a good person or a bad person. Life on Earth right now is just like a middle ground. My purpose, honestly, to touch as many lives as I can. I want to make the world a better place. It's easy to think of heaven as the ultimate goal, a beautiful, perfect place where everything we've ever longed for is finally fulfilled. But in truth, heaven is not the end itself. The real hope of heaven is not simply in the splendor of the place, but in who we will be with for eternity. God himself. Heaven's beauty and perfection are magnified by his presence, but the true reward lies in the relationship we will enjoy with him forever. The streets of gold and peace beyond understanding are only glimpses of heaven's glory. The true treasure is eternal life with the one who created us loves us and desires to dwell with us for all eternity. It's not just a destination, it's an everlasting union with God, the fulfillment of our deepest longing. I believe a lot of believers have a misconception about heaven because they make heaven their goal. Ultimately, it's not about heaven. It's about spending eternity with God. And that's what God promised to us, to humanity through Jesus, that if you believe in Jesus and you allow Jesus to create you anew and make you part of his new thing that he's doing and give you eternal life, you will spend eternity with God. And you see, this is the term that we need to understand, you know, because we are time bound, but we are not eternity minded. So, uh, you know, so, so, so because we are time bound, we, 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 we focus on heaven as our goal after this life. But heaven is not our goal. Our goal should be eternity. Whatever God is doing with you in time will reflect in eternity. So if you have time on earth being alive and you reject God's invitation to spend eternity with Him, you will go to a place which God has made possible for people to spend eternity because of their choice. But Jesus stepped into humanity and said, I want to rectify what you guys made a mess of. You've lost eternity. You've lost it. I've placed it in your heart, but because of sin, you've lost it. And now you are disconnected from the source of eternity. And I have come to rectify that. I have come to be the door that if you look at me, you you do what I ask you to do. You repent of your sin. You put your faith in me. You can step through that door and be connected and become an eternal being again. Now, what is eternity? Eternity is, is, is being with God forever. So there's eternity with God and eternity without God. Now, eternity with God is the ultimate goal. And as I explained, that if you make heaven your goal, which many Christians do, You've got, you are short-sighted of the plan that God has because the plan that God has is ultimately to consume the earth with heaven and to bring forth a new heaven and a new earth as one where He will reign with His people forever and ever. So if heaven is just your goal, you're going to be surely disappointed when God comes and He consumes the earth or he creates a new heaven and a new earth that is one Uh, and a lot of christians think that you know after this life is only heaven no there's much much more but heaven is the start it's the place where god is currently living that's where his throne is but now if getting born again giving your life to christ allowing him to create in you a spirit that is born from His Spirit, that's an eternal part of existence. You now allow God to start the process again of manifesting heaven on earth. So imagine a billion born-again Christians walking on the streets. That's a, that's a billion little vessels of heaven touching the world. 
and 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 that is that is God's plan and he invites us to be part of that plan. Jesus made it clear that eternal life isn't just about reaching a place but about knowing him. He is the way, the truth and the life. Through his sacrifice, the gates of heaven are open to all who believe in him. How do we receive this eternal life then? His blood was spilled, he was beaten for our sins. So that is more than any price for any Christian, for any believer. It's just not Christian, anyone born. And he said it that softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. I don't personally believe in Jesus, but I think uh, if, if it helps someone to, you know, deal with uh, their afterlife and with the fear of death, then yeah, sure. He died on the cross, he rose again and sort of that's the price that was paid for us, like on our behalf. Don't know, don't know. So I'm not religious. I don't, I don't know about Jesus. I used to be a Christian, and I lost my faith 50 years ago. So no role at all. No, I don't believe in the role. I think Jesus, amongst other um, enlightened prophets, um, plays a role in helping us connect to our hearts, helping us understand what's really important. I don't know. I mean, he probably does have a role in it. I think as long as you have some sort of belief, I don't think you have to believe in Jesus specifically. I think that if you believe in, you know, having another life pass another life, I think that you're accepted regardless. No, because I don't believe in God. As a as a thing, maybe as an energy, but not as a as a being. Yeah, I think that is the oldest business uh, that we had uh, since the human uh, lived in the earth. Uh, it was an amazing way of controlling and making rules um, when we didn't have police or we didn't have a government. I don't have anything against the church at all, um, but I could see how. Sometimes people think they need to, to they need to like go through the church to get to God, and and I think what we need more is to remember that we can build our own connection to God. He has sent his apostles, his prophets, everything to teach you to to do what's right. I think you can only get to know him after life. So yeah, I do believe you could definitely have your own relationship with God or Jesus or any other entity. I think as long as you believe that there is good in any shape or form, uh, I, I support that. Not necessarily by religious person. The Bible again declares that Jesus is the door. And by that, we mean that what God ultimately lost through our sin was that God didn't created us to be angels or creatures or animals or even robots. You know, God created us to be just like Him, a relational being. And God ultimately wanted relationship with man. That's why it's not about finding a faith or believe you're a Christian. It's about, do you have a relationship with God? And that relationship can only come through Jesus. By allowing Jesus to create you anew, by repenting of your sins, by putting your faith in Him, by asking Him to make you part of His eternal plan, starts and ends in a relationship. And the relationship is so vital. And when you have that relationship and it's growing and it's vibrant and you grow with Jesus and you walk with Jesus, Jesus constantly will assure you of eternity with Him. And not just heaven with it, eternity with it. Now, if you, if you accept Jesus today and you die tomorrow and Jesus is not coming back between today and tomorrow, then you will die in Christ and you will go to where Christ is at this moment. And that's in heaven. But the Bible says when Jesus returns on, at the second coming, He is not coming alone. He is coming back with everyone that's with him in heaven. So, 
if you give your life to Jesus today and a week from now is the second coming, well, you will experience heaven for a week and you will be back on earth with Jesus and the rest of us. So we can never make heaven the eternal goal, even our goal. It is eternity with God. And it starts with a relationship with Jesus. He is the one that invites you back to your original place. He's the one that invites you back to the, to, the, to the plan that God had for humanity from the beginning. And uh, as you grow with Jesus and as you have a relationship with Him, He will not stop confirming to you that you are His. No one will rip you out of His hand. He will get you where He needed you to be in the future and He will finish the work that He has started with you. So if you have Jesus, you can be assured of eternal life with God and not eternal life without God. You know, this is the thing is what a lot of people don't understand. As heaven is real, there's a real place called hell. And hell was a place that God made for the fallen angels that rebelled against Him. Because of their rebellion, they couldn't stay in the realm of perfection and holiness and righteousness because they chose a, a life of decay, a life of death, a life of separation from God. And God is so gracious that He created a place for them to go for eternity because He has created them for eternity. And the same principle applies to us. In fact, if we, we choose to go to hell and not to heaven or not to eternity with God. So the choice is actually, do I want to spend eternity with a holy, righteous, loving, perfect God in the realm of His existence or not? And Jesus said, I'm the door. Not Allah, not Muhammad. Not Buddha. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that's a choice that we have to make, each and every one of us. And I pray that whoever listens to me today will stop trying to figure it out, stop trying to choose a faith or a, a certain church. or a, None of that is going to help. What is going to help? is giving your life to Jesus. What is going to help is to allow Him to make you new, make you part of His eternal plan, and you grow in a relationship with Him since the day you give your life to Him till the day He comes back. And it will be a growing relationship forever and ever and ever in His realm of existence. As we've seen, heaven is the promise of eternal life with God. But this truth brings a responsibility the church, as Christ's body on earth, has been entrusted with a mission, one that points to heaven, but also impacts the here and now. I think heaven is just a state of mind. Again, it's just a, an, an awareness of the immensity of beauty and love that is already present right now. Since I don't know if there's one or no, and if there's an afterlife or no, I think I just try to make the best the day, like the best out of every day. So if, yeah. let's say, I would pass tonight, I could be like, okay, I had a nice day today. I, at least I did one thing that made me happy yeah. and that... Do you enjoy Yeah, that I like enjoy life, how exactly. you want to live it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I agree. Life's too short, do what you want, take exactly. the risk, take the leap of faith, and you'll see. You're so right. I want people to, you know, come along there. It's not this... It's not a secret. It's not like this thing that's just for like a specific chosen few. It's an open invitation and all you have to do is accept it, you know? Ultimately, the, 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 the mission of the church is to plunder hell and populate heaven. Because a lot of people think that you're going to live your life and one day you're going to die and then you're going to stand before God and then God is going to say heaven or hell. It doesn't work like that. If you study the word, you find that we are all, without Jesus in our lives, we are all already judged. So that means 
we, the judgment is already cast where we will end up the day we step from time into eternity future. So a lot of people think, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live my life and then I'm going to take my chance and stand before God. And because He's a gracious God, He's going to just allow me to go in. No, no. You have to understand that you've already been judged. The moment you step over, if you, do, if you step over without Jesus, you will step over into sentencing. And that's just one place. Hell. So it's not a chance worth to take. You cannot take that chance. The best and wise option is to hear what God is saying, believe that He has a great plan and eternal future with you. You cannot fix yourself. You cannot get yourself in that realm of existence where He is without Him creating you anew. Now the new that He creates is an incorruptible spirit man because the Bible says God is spirit so if God wants to make us just like him he has to take us that are soulish and fleshly to become spirit first so when you turn to Jesus and you give your life to him you allow him to create a new spirit man in you that is ultimately you forever your soul stays the same that is your, that is you your mind emotion and will those two things is contained in the body and the body is broken and fallen that's why when you read the new testament in corinthians 5 that that paul the apostle explains this to us and he says because we've accepted jesus because we got a new spirit because we were filled with the holy spirit as a deposit for God to come and get us. One day, the day Jesus arrives, what He will do is He will consume the body of flesh and gives us an incorruptible body as well. That's a great deal. Because you need a body without decay, without sickness, without disease, without a fallen nature to exist in the realm of perfection. Of holiness and righteousness so it's far more than just heaven or hell and the church's mission and this is what's so beautiful the church's mission is Jesus touching vessels on earth and starting that process of consuming them with perfection and righteousness and holiness as they walk with him and allow and using them as vessels where he can touch other people, inviting them onto the same process. So that's why we said God left heaven, that realm, to come to earth, to touch lives, change lives, and then take abode in those vessels, which we are born again, spirit filled. Creatures. That's why the Bible talks about the church, born again church as God's new creatures. It's actually amazing. God created the world, He created man, He created animals, He created, and then He created the new man. And the whole New Testament is about the new man. Paul the Apostle writes us to explain to us this new creature and how this new creature operates and what's so powerful and wonderful. Uh, I know that one preacher calls it the new Superman. And now when God has these places, the Bible talks about temples. We are the temple of God. We God now not just lives in heaven, but lives on earth in us. And the mission of the church is to tell so many people as possible about this wonderful opportunity that God has presented to us through Jesus. And it's through His church that this message is spread, lives touched, and more vessels added to God's plan. So without the church going and sharing with people 
this amazing invitation. People will go to slaughter like blind sheep. It's such, that's why it's good news. It's, it sounds too good to be true. But that is what God is busy doing. And as I said in the beginning, God ultimately wanted to bring the fullness of heaven to earth. God wants to, to consume everything about earth and bring it into the likeness of heaven. But he had to do this through man. That's why in the beginning it says in Genesis chapter 126 that God said, let us create man in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion. So God declared it that he, whatever he wants to achieve has to come through man. And Satan knew that, and he did not want God to bring heaven to earth, and he got man to choose the wrong way. But Jesus came, walked in obedience, walked in submission to God unto death and made a way possible for us, for humanity, to become those vessels of good use for God again so that God could ultimately fulfill His plan. And if that doesn't excite you that God wants to make you a vessel fit for his use so that you can become part of his eternal plan. I don't know what will. I really don't know. And heaven is just one aspect of his eternal plan. But the ultimate is God left heaven to come to earth. So we must leave our church services and go into the world. As Jesus left heaven, as Jesus left everything about himself in heaven to take a lower form of existence to reach a world, that's the same mindset we must have as the church. Even though God has made us new, even though God calls us His holy people, even though God calls us His royal priesthood, even God calls us as His new creatures, even God, even though God calls us His sons and His daughters, and that we are special, we must have the mindset that Jesus had. I will leave this position that I have with God, and I will go into the world, and I will share my Father's message to the world. The church exists to share the hope of heaven with a world in need. Every act of service, every message preached, every prayer offered is an invitation to others to experience the life that Jesus offers. Heaven is our destination, but the mission of the church is to bring the reality of heaven God's love, grace, and truth to people's lives today. So, this whole week and this whole day is about heaven to a home. And you might ask, why heaven to a home? It's because Jesus existed in heaven and he left heaven to come to our home. That's how simple it is. He left his home to come into our home, hoping that we would invite him to stay with us in our home. And that's why many people are here today, and we are so thankful that you are here, because as a church, we understand that we are responsible to leave our homes which we already invited Jesus into to come to your home, your life, your family and invite you into this wonderful thing that we are part of. Because the Bible says, how will they know if there's not a preacher? How will they know about this amazing thing that God has made available for every human being, 
without somebody that's prepared to go, leave their home, leave their country, leave their community, and invite people or enter into other people's homes to be able to sit down and explain to you how to obtain what we have and how we can give what we have. The Bible says freely that what you've received, freely go give that to others. And I'm so thankful for all our members that left their comfort, left their homes to invite hundreds of people today to experience heaven with us. And that's what we, that we pray for, that's what we trust is that we can bring people into an atmosphere that's different from the world, an atmosphere where heaven manifests itself so that they can get a taste of what we are part of, so that when we invite them, and in fact, we don't invite you. Jesus lives in us, and He is actually through us stepping into your home, into your life, trying to get your attention for you to sit down, to give him a moment to bring to you the truth of the matter, to reveal to you the way to eternal life. And he's extending his hand through his church or his hands through his church to any individual today that has never given him the opportunity to save them, to heal them, to restore them, to make them new and to make them part of His eternal plan for mankind. And that's why we have a day and a week like heaven to home. We understand our mission. Our understanding of heaven is not just a personal hope, it's a call to action. As a church, we believe in bringing heaven to homes. This means sharing the truth of heaven and the love of Jesus with every person, especially those who do not yet know him. Our mission is simple but profound, to bring heaven to every person and not as a far-off dream, but as an invitation to know Jesus today, to know his love, his peace and the eternal life he offers. The doors to heaven are open and we, as the church, are here to help lead the way. Will you accept this invitation?